Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I'm going to review a Shelly product and this is the Shelly gas sensor and if you follow my YouTube you've probably seen the post where I posted a picture of you know three different Shelly products that I've received recently I started playing around with them and that's the first one I decided to review and as the name suggests this is a smart gas sensor which works in a Shelly ecosystem not that I've done a very extensive research but it looks like that there is not an awful lot of gas sensor product in the smart home range even though at least in Europe where I live I think in many countries gas or natural gas is used extensively for heating and cooking and hot water and I also have natural gas for heating and domestic hot water and actually there are two different uh, versions available from uh, this uh, gas sensor there is the LPG version which I have got so this is I think more sensitive to butane and propane and there is an LNG version which is uh, sensitive to methane and even though I have a gas line which is you know natural gas so that's the LNG version I opted to order the LPG version because in order to test this I can use you know a blowtorch or uh, the refill cartridge of a lighter which they are usually butane and of course I didn't want to mess up with my you know mains gas line in order to test this unit so that's why I have the LPG version but other than that as the name suggests this is a smart sensor so it has obviously the sensor which detects the gas leakage and it's going to give you an audio and visual alarm as well so it's going to beep when there is a gas leak detected just like a CO2 or a smoke sensor but it also has the Wi-Fi capability so it's going to connect to the cloud you can monitor the gas concentration on your phone and also you can set up automation so you get some alerts when there is a leakage detected and as we are going to see when I go into the app what I like about the product is it's going to show you actual concentration of gas like in ppm but when you go into like the automation instead of the ppm value you can configure it for a mild gas leak or a I think it's a medium or a strong gas leak so you don't have to know about what ppm values correspond to a mild or a stronger gas leak you can just configure the automation based on the sever severity of the gas leak on the unit itself we have this um, you know rounded uh, box type of design with a lot of holes on the front face and on the side as well we have a status LED here on the upper right also we have a ring here which is going to illuminate green when it's powered red when it's an alarm and yellow when it's on fault there is a self test button on the top and there is a hole here which looks like a plug but actually I think this is just part of the sensor and there is a re removable uh, mains plug on the back so I'm assuming that this would get replaced based on which region this unit is sold in and in the box you are getting the sensor itself there is an instruction leaflet and actually this is only in English so all these pages about instruction using the device and there is a separate leaflet I'm guessing this would be either this LPG version or the LNG version and as you can see it says that it's best if this unit is placed 0.3 meters above the floor and within one and a half meters of the gas source and also probably I'm, what I'm not going to show in the video when you power this up it's going to do a self test so in the first couple of minutes this uh, status ring is just going to blink between green uh, red and yellow and also going to be some audio alerts in the initial self test phase and in the box you can just see some stats and you know details and a sticker on whether this is the LPG or the LNG version I've already gone through the pairing process and I've added the gas sensor to my Shelly app and into my test room and I don't want to go through the pairing because it's just like with any Shelly product and it is sufficiently explained in the small documentation leaflet or the user manual and once I go into the device details you can see that it shows me the ppm value of the gas concentration and I also get a graph and well there is no gas in the room where it is at at the moment but if I go to weekly you can see that I managed to trigger the gas sensor by using this uh, blowtorch and 
actually I'm going to do that as well because I think it takes a little bit of time for the reading to come through so I'm just going to open this torch up a little bit of course without a flame and I'm doing this experiment with the windows open obviously so I get some cross ventilation the gas is not going to build up in the room but I'm just going to give it a little bit of gas that's that much and then hopefully within a couple of seconds Okay, uh, I think you managed to get the whole, you know, full range of alerts because without doing any configuration for this device, once the gas uh, actually was detected, as you can see, the PPM has gone up to all the way to 4000, which was a mild gas leak. So you get a notification of that gas leak on the screen here just above just below the ppm value and there was also an alert in the app as well you are getting this alert standard in the app so i haven't even configured anything so by default if there is a gas leak detected your phone is going to beep and it's going to tell you that there is a gas leak and i'm not sure how much is going to come through the recording but the device was beeping as well and my phone was beeping as well so this is the type of alert that you get in the phone so so just by configuring this device and adding it to your Shelly app and without doing any further configuration, you will definitely get notification if there is a gas leak detected. And of course, it works just like a CO2 or a smoke sensor. So there is local alerts as well. So uh, even if you forget configuring it when you install it straight away, it will definitely give you know, a local alert when, you know, wherever it's plugged in. Okay, let's carry on with the user interface. So as you can see, you have the, uh, the PPM value on the top, you have a graph and you can change the graph values. Probably you just have to wait a little bit until this uh, graph statistics updates as well. And you can change between these, you know, standard views, you know, monthly or yearly. Well, I don't have an awful lot of data or you can go custom and you can also download the statistics and it gets downloaded to a CSV file on your phone. And by the way, a few minutes has passed and the graph on the main page has also updated. So you can see that that was the, the gas leak that I managed to simulate with this propane torch. And it was, that was a maximum of 4,600 PPM. Well, that's a lot. And you can see it on the weekly graph as well. And down below we see some uh, controls as well. So I'm going to go through them. So the first of all is you can initiate a self-test here and you can do the self-test from this button as well. And it's just going to do a self-test. And you are going to also receive a, well, an audio notification here. And there is going to be a notification in the app as well that you have done a self-test. It's just going to beep again, so I'm not going to do that. But you can test the device. You can also mute the device. So if you don't want any audio notifications, I'm not sure why you would do that, but I don't know if you know that you have some issues and you're getting some false alarms, but then, you know, what's the point of having a sensor if you are not going to pay attention to the notifications, but still you have a mute button. Next, let me pick the settings. So in the settings, you can do a couple of things. You can change the volume. So if the beeping is too loud, you can lower it. You can do firmware update. You can sync the name with, of this device with the uh, cloud. You can change the time zone. You can do factory reset. You can reboot the device. And you also get some device information. So what's the local IP and the Wi-Fi name? I'm, I'm not really sure if you would you know, come to this page very often. The next one is the share. So you can share this device with other Shelly users. So they would also have access to this device. They can view the you know, the gas concentration and, you know, the PPM values. And then finally, we have the internet and the security settings. And here you can configure things like what Wi-Fi the device connects to. You can also set up a backup Wi-Fi. So if you have two different Wi-Fi's in your house, you know, maybe like it's a bigger house and two Wi-Fi routers on different parts of the house, you can set one as a primary and the other one is a backup. So if the backup has more strength, then it's going to connect to the backup. And you can also configure the access point mode. Um, uh, to be honest, I don't think it's you know really required. I mean, you can set this unit up so it creates an access point and you can connect it locally. And 
all shell devices they have an embedded web server if you go to this ip address in your internet browser you can access pretty much the same information that i'm showing you on the phone and anyone in the local network has access to that web page but you can set a user id and a password authentication so it would only let people in and finally let's talk about how the shelly gas can be integrated with other shelly devices and for that usually i go into the scenes but actually there is a known issue with the scenes because if i try to create a new one so i want to create a scene when if there is a leak detected let's say another shelly device gets turned on let's say a shelly 1 pm or what well, any Shelly device for that matter. So let's assume that this is a room where you have your furnace or other gas device and then you have a like a ventilation fan which is controlled by another Shelly. So of course when a gas leak is detected you want to turn that device on so the fan starts running. So if I want to create a uh, automation for that what we are going to see that obviously I want to set up a condition that when the Shelly detects or the Shelly gas detects a gas leak so in the test room but what you are going to notice is there is no shelly gas here on the on the list of the devices on the trigger side and um, i got a confirmation that this is a known issue and they are working on that one so we can't use these scenes at the moment but of course there is another way and um, i skipped that functionality when i reviewed all the different options here and this is the io url actions and if i go into this as you can see we have three different options uh, where you define what should happen when there is a mild leak or a heavy leak detected and when the leak alarm goes off and what you can do here is you can specify a url that the device or the shelly gas is going to call when this event happens and i did mention in my first shelly review video which i think it was the shelly 1 pm that you can control any of these devices by using simple url statements and the example that you see here is my shelly 1 pm so my shelly 1 pm has an ip address of 192.168.1.154 at the moment i haven't assigned a fixed ip address to that if you are planning to use this permanently i suggest that you specify a fixed ip address for the device that you want to control so and by the way you can uh, get the device ip if you go into settings and i think it's in the device information so you can see that this shelly gas is 153 so going back to the url so you can specify the url slash relay slash zero because that's a 1 pm so it has only one relay and then question mark turn equals on so that is going to turn on my shelly 1 pm and that would work exactly the same way if you have another shelly product i mean if it has multiple outputs then maybe it's going to be slash one or slash two but uh, you just have to look at the particular device that you want to use for that so if there is a mild leak detected i enabled this action i specified the url and i clicked on the save button so if the leak is detected that is going to turn on the shelly one and let's say if it's connected to a fan that will start refreshing the air in the room where you know this gas sensor in for example and if there is a heavy leak actually i specify the same one but maybe you know you have a second fan you can turn on a second fan as well and you can also specify multiple uh, urls so let's say if you want to have a second fan if there is a heavy leak then you add another url which is going to activate fan one and fan two at the same time and when the alarm goes off so if there is no leak detected anymore then the url is almost the same with a slight bit of change uh, at the end it says question mark turn equals off and so that's going to turn off the relay and that will stop your fan and of course just uh, be sure that you always click on the enable and when you provide the url you click on save and that's how your settings are going to be saved so it is not as easy as picking devices from the scenes you have to find out the ip you have to type all this url in but actually it has one advantage because if you would use the scenes then the information from the Shelly goes up to the cloud and from the cloud, the cloud server is going to operate your other Shelly device, which is connected to the fan. But here, your gas sensor is talking directly to the other Shelly device on your local network. So even if your internet goes down, your automation is going to work. So this is one reason to always, you know, think about this and maybe use the URL actions 
as opposed to scenes. Because in this case we are dealing with gas and gas leaks, this is probably more sensitive than a simple you know, light switch. So it works to use the actions instead of the scenes just to make sure that it works even if your internet goes down. So I think that would be my review of the Shelly gas sensor. Uh, now if, you go, if I go back to the monthly view, you can see that uh, gas leak that I've triggered with a blowtorch. If you are interested in this product, I'm going to leave links in the video description. But that would be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.